Welcome to Not A Roofer's Podcast, where we discuss roofing without all the jargon. I'm Brianna. And I'm Charity. And this is today's episode. Hello, listener. This is Brianna with Not A Reverse Podcast. I wanted to come on and just let you know that what you're going to hear in today's episode is going to reference IRE and NWIR Day as they are happening in August. Um, But we recorded this episode early since those events are happening right now in Las Vegas. So if you want to catch up with us and see what we're doing right now at IRE and NWIR Day, please head over to our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Those are linked below. And we hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Not A Rivers Podcast. Charity and I are so excited to have another guest with us and I will let her introduce herself. Hello. Thank you so much for having me today. This is really, really exciting. My name is Heidi Ellsworth, and I am the owner of Roofers Coffee Shop and also the founder of National Women in Roofing. And it was just, I'm thrilled that you would um, want to spend some time visiting with me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. How did you get started in the roofing industry? Well, Charity, that's interesting. So, you know, I think unless you're born into a roofing family, you never really plan on going into roofing. It's um, really interesting. But I was, I'm actually from Oregon, and I was working for a Catholic high school doing development and alumni relations and all that sort of thing um, in Portland, Oregon. And I had, we'd had our first, um, our son, James, who actually works for Roofer's Coffee Shop now. And I kind of decided I didn't really want to do all the committee nights and evenings, and I wanted more time with my family. So um, I applied for a job with Malarkey Roofing Company, a shingle manufacturer out of Portland, Oregon, and got the job as marketing coordinator. And that's where everything started. And I um, still love Malarkey. They are just an amazing company, great, amazing products. And so I was really happy that I got to start my career there. Um, it's funny you said, you know, if you're not born into a roofing um, family, like you don't expect to join the roofing industry. We were both born into it. And we didn't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's really painful. Well, both my kids work for um, Roofers Coffee Shop now. So I consider they're in the roofing industry just on a little bit of a different side of it. And neither of them ever thought they would um, work in the roofing industry with me. So, but you know, it's just such a great industry and great people and awesome opportunities for young people that, um, we can't help that we suck you into it. (laughs) Yes. Yep. That's how it happens. (laughs) (laughs) So you've mentioned Riffers Coffee Shop a couple of times. Um, can you tell us the story of what it is, who, like who you are, what you do, how it got started, like all of it? Yeah, no, that, that's a great story, actually. So it actually was started by my partner, um, Vicki Sharples. And so back in the day, um, this would be in the 80s and 90s, um, when I was working at Malarkey, I advertised for Malarkey in this newspaper called Roofers Exchange. And Roofers Exchange was a nickel ads, you know, it's where contractors could place ads, classified as there was advertising for manufacturers and there was safety talks. There was all kinds of little things, but it was a newspaper and this newspaper would get um, mailed to distributors across the country. So almost every single distribution distributor had these roofers exchange newspapers on their counter. So anyone who's a lot older than both of you, um, closer to my age will remember roofers exchange. Um, and then Vicki, having great visionary site, um, said, you know what, we need to go online. And so in 2002, she, Roofers Exchange just wasn't doing what it needed to do. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story. Hopefully this is okay for your podcast. But when you do www.roofersexchange.com, it comes out roofer sex change. (laughs) And so... That just wasn't going to fly, especially in the early days of the internet. There was a lot of, you know, issues around that and it would fly really anytime. And so um, 
we, Vicki called me and I'd been, I was advertising with her before. And then when I had started my own consulting business after malarkey, I had HJE marketing and I had a consulting marketing business. She called me and she said, um, Hey, I've got this problem. <laughs> I need a new name to go onto the internet. And so much like both of you, my dad was a contractor and he was a general contractor. And so I grew up in the trades and I kind of thought about what my dad did. And my dad, we lived in rural Oregon. So he worked sometimes a couple hours away. Um, he had a, goodnight a concrete goodnight truck. And so the first thing he would do when he hit a small town in Eastern Oregon is he'd find the local coffee shop and you'd look for the one with the trucks out in front of it. And then he would go in and he would get his networking. He would find late day labor. He'd find out where the products were. He'd get directions, you know, plus a lot of coffee. And so I thought, you know, that's a comfortable place online for contractors. That's, it makes sense because they've been doing this. And so we, um, in 2002, launched Roofer's Coffee Shop online, first digital online for um, roofing and pretty much the only one that's been consistently digital on um, that whole time. Today, we have over 100,000 visitors a year on the site, all roofing, and we have classified ads, just like that little newspaper. We have education, we have podcasts like yours, we have videos. We just did our first live um, conversations at FRSA, and it was so awesome. So yeah, it's a site for contractors to find what they need. We have a wonderful thing called an R Club, which is networking for contractors and also discounts on classified ads and all the good stuff on the site. So um, I would welcome anybody to come visit us there. Awesome. Yeah, I, I've been on it before. You've been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of it. So. Oh, Charity, we need to get you on there. And it's not, don't do roofers exchange. Do rooferscoffeeshop.com. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to take a look at it. I actually, okay. I found roofers coffee shop when we were planning this podcast and figuring out like what to do, what the roofing industry didn't already have. Um, and so, yeah, I was there a lot. Yeah. I know. And podcasts are new and also just they're so organic and authentic. I love it. So this is very good. We're going to have to get your guys on the site. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I should say what can you tell us about National Women in Riffing or how did it get started or I don't know what's a good way to phrase it, Brie. How about both? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can do both. Um I guess first, how did National Women in Roofing start? Yep, that would be a good place to start. So, um, like I said, I started in 1994, actually 1993 in roofing, working for Malarkey, and I was in charge of all the trade shows. And so, right off the bang, my first trade show in 1994 was the Florida Roofing Show, and then went to the IRE, and it was just... Um, you know, it was fast and it was in these trade shows. I didn't know anybody. I was like, I didn't know anything about roofing. And, but through the years, I made all these friends and other women in the industry who are working the trade shows or contractors working in companies, but never a lot, but always enough. And we always ended up finding each other at the end of the night, you know, um, hanging out in the bar, whatever, and talking and kind of finding that sisterhood of roofing ladies. And, um, so we kept talking about it. I would talk to my family, I'm like, we should put an organization together. We should do something to help get more women into the industry. And it took me until 2014 and in 2014, I was just like, we have to do this. So I started pitching it and talking to different, um, associations out there, talk to the Midwest association, to Western States, I, um, NRCA and Steve Little of K post, um, stepped up with the Midwest and really said, yeah, I think this is super important. And it wasn't that the other ones didn't cause they all were supportive. It was just, he was the first. And, um, so he, we kind of start, started through, I was on the advisory board of MRCA. We started bringing people together, bringing women together. And we formed this awesome group of women who were like, yeah, let's do this. Let's put an association together. And it went so fast because it was so needed. It was just viral. And so we decided relatively quickly it needed to be national and international someday. And so um, 
I then actually visited with a gentleman, Trent Cotney. And Trent Cotney, who most people know has an amazing law firm for roofing um, that's national, he helped us put the association together. And in 2016, we launched National Women in Roofing. But it took that long, trying to kind of put it together and find all the sponsors and everything. And then we developed our um, pillars, recruiting, networking, education, and mentoring. And um, and we stuck close to those. And I mean, we had lots of up and downs, like how do we do sponsorships? How do we do memberships? But we, every single time, every question that came up to us as we were putting this is, we just have to look through the lens of empowerment. Is what the decision we, the decisions we're making, are they empowering women in roofing? Are they gonna help bring more women to roofing? And so that's why, you know, we started out $60 was all it was. And still, I think it's 75 now for mm-hmm. membership and, the woman owns it, right? And it's, it's a professional membership. It's not owned by the company. Um, sponsorships, you know, how did th- those come in? We made them very reasonable and the companies just started coming in. So, and since then, now, oh my gosh, uh, the current chair is Renee Bales of K-Post, past chair Jennifer Stone, future chair Michelle Boykin. These are amazing women who are leading amazing councils. Bree's starting your own council and you're doing amazing things. So um, it's just, it was a matter of just lighting, striking the match. And it has turned into a bonfire across the country. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. And I yeah. like... I guess I didn't realize it was only started in 2016 officially. Yes. Like, that's really not that long ago. It's not. I thought it's been around for longer. Yeah, I did too. Because <laughs> hasn't our dad been talking about it for years? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm glad your dad's talking about it. That makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah. So so when Charity joined the company, because she joined before I did. Um, I know he, one of the first things he wanted was to be like, you should join National Women in Roofing. Um, but he took the that approach of, off for so long. Yeah, <laughs> he took the approach of, of letting it be our decision because he didn't want right. to force it on us and, and have it be this thing of like, oh, we're being forced to join this whatever. And he wanted us to really, you know, connect with it on our own first. Um, and same thing when I joined. He, he like mentioned it once, I think, and then he just let it be. Yeah. Um, so when I reached out to him, I think it was in March because I like both of us are very new members. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had gone. We were at the virtual IRE in March, mm-hmm. and I talked to somebody from Music City Roofers. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we were talking about it, and she started t- like talking about National Moon and Ripping, and I was like, oh, and I had just like not networked a ton because I only joined the company in 2020. So I hadn't spent a lot of time and COVID, like it was hard to branch out, obviously. And so I started thinking, I was like, oh, wow, it was so great to network. And maybe this is a really good way to feel maybe more included than I was. And I texted him, I was like, can I join National Women in Riffing? (laughs) And He told me this afterwards. He was really excited for that text message, and he knew his answer right away. But what he texted back is, well, why do you want to join? And he Mm. made me, like, tell him all of my reasons why. (laughs) And then when we talked later, he's like, I was going to tell you yes right away. I just wanted to to know. (laughs) It's good dad. (laughs) Yeah. I knew he was going to tell me yes, and then I was confused why he asked me the same question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, well, this is the whole reason why we started National Women in Roofing is for you two. I mean, that's exactly why we started it, because it is so empowering to have to know all these people to be able to reach out and email anytime. Whereas before you might think, oh, I can't email that person. They don't know me or anything. But now you can say, hey, I'm just joined National Women in Roofing. I'd really like to get to know you. And everybody's like, yeah, I want to get to know you too. And so it just has opened so many doors for women and it's making, I think the industry that, well, I, not, I don't think, I know the professional professionalism of the industry has skyrocketed. When other people look outside the industry and think about coming in, they say, wow, they have a national association for women. They must be, have some diversity going and they don't know that we're working on it, but it's, it still sends such a great message. 
Yeah, and then um, I know NWIR Day is coming up in August. Yes. Um, what, like, I'm interested in it because I've never been, obviously. So, like, when did that start? Because it, it came about after National Women and Ripping started, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, how did that come about? Were you part of that? Mm-hmm. I was, actually. That it, It's really funny. When you go back to, like, the four founding, what I would say, the four – And there were more earlier, but the four that really kind of took it national was Jennifer Ford Smith from um, Johns Manville, Jennifer Stone from Johns Manville, Sherry Carlazzi, who's now with Fibertype, but was with Hapco at the time, and myself. And we all four had kind of different um, big goals. Like, you know, what, what are your big goals that you really want? And my big goal was National Women in Roofing Day. And, and also having it recognized by the industry and by I, um, NRCA and that this was National Women in Roofing Day. So, and it would always be two days before IRE started. So um, no matter when it was, but that's, it would be consistent. So it's not a consistent date, but it's a consistent time. Um, and We, so we went to, I went to Bill Good, who was the CEO of NRCA at that time. And I said, what do you think of this? We we would like this to be this day. And we're going to do a big event right in front of IRE. It'll bring more people in. It should, it it will empower the industry. And he was like, I love it, Heidi. That's a great idea. So NRCA um, signed off on it right away. And then we went to Informa, who is the show, the um, show group that, or the company that runs it. And we talked to them and they bought off on it and they were like, yeah, we'll help you. This is great. Obviously it's great for them, right? It brings more people to the IRE. Um, But so we, our first one was in 2017. I hope that's right, but I think so. 2017, it wasn't real big, um, but it was so powerful that everyone talked about it. Everybody was like, Wow. And so we had speakers, we had people go on there, we had classes, we put the whole thing together. And it just was amazing. It was such an amazing day. And so we've hit it every IRE since. um, And it continues to grow. In 2020, we had close to 400 women there, um, which is just was so spectacular. And um, and, you know, another interesting thing is Sherry Carlazzi, one of the things, she had two big goals. She had a content library on women in, uh, in the National Women in Roofing site, and then she wanted to do a world award for recognizing women. And so last year, that came true. And I was so, uh, and still just, I was so blessed to be the first recipient of the world award last year. And um, so I get to present it this year to the next, to the second world award winner. Um, so we had all these kind of things. Jennifer Ford Smith was mentoring. She was focused on that. And she, and she's the one who really brought the mentoring to the front. And Jennifer Stone was focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And she always has been in education. And she has brought that to the forefront now that we have a full committee on that and is going. So all these things wrap up into these big, original goals. And now we're looking for women to come forward with the next, what are the next big goals for the next big things that need to happen. And also um, we wrap it all up into national women in roofing day. So if you were to ask me like, why should I go to national women in roofing day? You will make friends that will last a lifetime. And I'm not kidding. I, you can ask people all over. You will make friends forever and you will be empowered. Um, I'll tell a story Last year, I walked into the bathroom and there was a young girl there and she was crying. And I was like, oh my God, are you okay? What's going on? And she's like, and she just looked up at me and she goes, oh, Heidi. And I said, yeah. I said, who are you? You know, we introduced ourselves and I said, what's wrong? And she says, I never thought I would have people empower me and want to help me like was what happened today. And I've had such a hard time with sexual harassment and some ceilings hitting her head. And she just says, I am now going away so much more empowered and I feel so much stronger and ready to go. She goes, it, I just broke down. And I was like, I started crying. We're like, oh my gosh, you know, actually Karen Edwards with me, she started crying. And um, it's those kind of experiences at National Women Roofing Day, besides the education, 
and everything you're going to learn and all the motivation, but it's just being able to realize you're not alone and to find other people who can help you become a better professional, a better person, everything else um, while we work in this great industry that needs, you know, needs a little help sometimes on the diversity side. So. Yeah. Well, exciting. I'm going this year, so yes. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to be, I am the lead off speaker, so I'll be speaking on um, setting the stage for your career and for the day and for balance and all of those kind of things. So I'll be really excited to have you there. That'll be great. Yeah. Charity, when are we going to get you there? <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> It just, it doesn't fall at a good time this year. <laughs> her her daughter's third birthday party is the day before. Oh, well, yeah. that's more important, a million times more important. So, yeah. plus but we I'll have be February. At yeah. Oh, and then February is, um, it'll be, a, so it's in August in Vegas. And then when we go to the IRE in February in New Orleans, there'll be National Women Roofing Day then too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've never we've never been to Vegas either of us. Yeah. So we're like really looking forward to this it. This will be fun. It's a new state that I get to add to my yeah. list. Same. Yeah. Same. Oh, Charity, remind me, I need to find a press penny machine. Okay. Well, I'm okay. sure they have one. I'm sure they do. I so side note. I collect press pennies. That's like my go to souvenir from every place I go to. Fun. Because they're fun. cheap, but they're fun. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I can see it framed, press pennies from everywhere you've gone. <laughs> you should gone. frame that. I've talked yeah. about it. We um, So I have two different, I have a little booklet of them, which are the ones that I've collected, like before I was married or places I go by myself. And then my husband and I have a little, I think it's for like train tickets or plane tickets or whatever, shadow box. But we oh. put our press pennies from where we went together in there. Fun. So, yeah. I love it. One day. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should talk about. Is there anything you know about the roofing industry that you think we should dive deeper into on our podcast? Um, well, you know, I, I'm also a, I'm a big advocate of technology. So was also pretty instrumental. I was one of the first founders of Roofing Technology Think Tank. And so how contractors can use technology, how you all are using technology to improve your production, your sales, your processes overall in the business, I think is so important. And I think it's also, you know, really understanding how this is going to change the industry, because with the labor shortage that's going on, um, it's just going to, American innovation is going to kick in and there's going to be forms of robotics on the roof to take that place where we can't get labor. And um, so that's always, it's just something I love and I'm always interested in. Um, and I, the other thing that I'm really passionate about is the next generation. So whether that's Gen Z, millennials, um, having all of you being involved in the roofing industry and leading us into the next um phases of the industry, I think is incredible. We did, um, we did a coffee conversations this last year on the coffee shop, um, with Gen Z. It's called the Gen Z takeover. So my daughter, Megan, who you'll meet, she's going to be at National Women Roofing Day. Um, she actually, instead of me being the host of the coffee conversations, she was the host of the coffee conversations. And we had three or four Gen Z's in the roofing industry come and talk. And it is still one of our most popular coffee conversations. So if you get a chance to watch it, it's really, so I, I really think you two are the future and the things that get me excited. Awesome. Anything else you can think of charity? No. You want to no. close it out? No, you can. <laughs> You're really not awake today, are you? Mondays may not be the best day for the podcast. I love you too. I think you're great. And I want to say thank you for having me because yeah. I just think this is a hoot. I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And 
for our listeners. We will be back next week. Bye. Bye. That brings us to the end of today's episode. If you've been loving what you're hearing, make sure to press the subscribe button so you get notified anytime we post a new episode. Episodes come out on Wednesdays. Please share this podcast with a friend, rate us, or leave a review. All of those help us to reach more listeners so that everybody can join us and learn more about the roofing industry as we go along on this journey. If you don't already follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, or YouTube, I will put all of our information in the show notes below. Feel free to contact us with any questions or ideas you have and would love for us to talk about on the podcast. I hope you have a great day and we will see you next time.